For this video, I bring you another BMC64 project. This is a project that I've done before. I use a different housing. And I've got a video on the channel that shows that. I just love this project, and if I can find hardware that I can use for it, I'm probably going to be interested. BMC64 stands for Bare Metal Commodore 64, and it's basically using a Commodore 64 case connected to a Raspberry Pi, and the Pi runs a version of the Vice emulator directly. And that's opposed to being running on a Raspberry Pi operating system, and then this emulator on top of it. To be clear, I didn't create this project, but I'm grateful for the person that did, because it leaves me with a really great machine. I'll put some links in the notes for this video to a forum for some more information if you want it. Ultimately, you, get it, you end up with a Commodore 64 machine that boots a Raspberry Pi right into the Commodore kernel, and it takes just a few seconds. And if you wanted to use other Commodore machines like the PET, the VIC-20, or the 128, you can configure those too. Mostly, I just care about the Commodore 64 world, but you can certainly branch into those systems if you want. The most important part of the project is probably getting a good case. I picked up this great condition, Commodore 16 housing off of eBay some months back for a really inexpensive price, and that's what made me want to do this. I think I spent like 30 bucks, maybe 40 It was cheaper than the Commodore 64 cases. And although it's the same shape as a bread bin Commodore, it's black with gray keys, which means no plastic yellowing over time, and that's awesome to not have to retrobread it. It looks great, it's in great shape, and the biggest obstacle I actually ran into this one probably was figuring out the keyboard layout. The C16 has a different key layout than the 64, in this particular case I think is a European model. The Commodore 16 came out after the Commodore 64 was released. They were hoping to go for a cheaper market. Basically, they replaced the VIC-20 with another entry machine. I read that this was considered a failure in the United States, and they stopped selling it pretty quick. Most sales for this were in Europe and Mexico, and I do believe it sold in Mexico for like a couple of years at least, like more than I would have expected. Compared to the 64, I'm pretty sure there wasn't nearly as much software available for it. It was a much less powerful machine, and likely users didn't want to downgrade. Besides the case, of course, there are going to be some other things that you need. I'm connecting to a Raspberry Pi Zero, which was much easier to source and cheaper than a standard Pi although you did have to solder in some GPIO pins. You also need some sort of a BMC board that connects to whatever Pi you use. There was a product out there called the Kira V2. That one's really hard to get a hold of, and it's expensive. This one's much cheaper, and it's sort of generic, and I guess you could even build the project without it, but you sort of would have to make choices to get joysticks and a power switch working. This one offers an outlet for power, it's got a switch to turn it on, and it's got the joystick ports. You can buy these parts and build the board yourself, I suppose, too, but I bought mine off eBay for about 25 bucks. If you build it yourself, you can source the parts, and the per-unit cost would be cheaper, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But you'd have to buy some things in bulk, and I really didn't want those extra parts sitting around. Past the BMC board, you need a power supply, and it's actually a relatively standard supply, and it's readily available on Amazon. I also needed a couple of small adapters. I had to turn the HDMI micro port on the Pi to a full-sized HDMI, and same thing for the USB micro. This lets me plug in two extensions that extend these ports to the back of the unit, so you can mount an HDMI and a USB plug. It looks pretty good. Don't have to open the case either. I also printed some 3D custom plastic components to fill up these open back ports in the housing and hold the USB and HDMI ports in place. I melted in a few brass standoffs for the Pi to screw into, and that part pretty much worked. For these printed parts, I first found some files online, but I ended up rebuilding them using Tinkercad to fit this machine specifically, because it is a little different inside. There's not a cassette uh, open port on the back on the left here, so I had to sort of move one of the ports over to the right. As far as the software, Tinkercad is a free website, and it's worth your time if you're into 3D printing. You can build simple 3D files without learning a really complex interface, and I'm a huge fan. And after sourcing and all the, printing all these different parts, the biggest problem I then ran into was the keyboard. Although this, this looks like an, a Commodore 64 keyboard, it's totally different. Besides some different keys on the right of the keyboard, that's probably the main stuff. Besides those keys being a little different, the wires in the harness are mapped differently. You can't just plug this keyboard into a Commodore 64 and expect it to work. It won't. It's built different. But I did locate a wiring map online, and using some leads from an Arduino kit and some various testing, 
I managed to rearrange the pinout to match the Commodore 64 keyboard. It's extra wire inside the case, but there's plenty of room in there now, so no problems there. The rewiring, it got almost the entire keyboard working, except I had eight keys on the top right that I had to figure out how to adjust uh, software, the keyboard mapping file in the emulator, just to make sure that these would work properly. And ultimately, I managed to get it all working. I do have to use the ampersand key to navigate the emulator menu, and I would prefer another key, but it does work, and all the other buttons work fine, and I can load, I can run software, no problem. If I can figure out the mapping in the menu, which is a very specific area, I might ultimately change it. But it's working. Works great. Once the keyboard was running, it was a matter of testing things to make sure that everything was running properly, and that I could load any of the files I wanted to load. And then you just sort of screw it all into place and close the case and just turn it on and it boots up. This pretty much adds another Commodore case to my collection. I think this winter I need to make some sort of a display shelf to store all these different projects. I do have a pretty weird collection of Commodore 64s now, and it would be nice to display them. I also have a few non-working Commodores that I actually am trying to fix. I got those on the workbench. I'll probably post some videos for that later in the season. Well, that's all I have today for the Commodore 16 BMC project. Thanks for stopping by to take a look, and hope to catch you on another video.